So today I'll present uh, the investigation about uh, the population dynamics in a modulated optomechanical setup, which is made uh, together with uh, under the supervision of uh, Mikhail Makovey at the Institute of Applied Physics. So I'll start by giving introduction, then I'll describe the theoretical approach, and I'll finish by giving results and conclusions. So the spontaneous emission of a emitter occurs when it interacts with the, its environment. So if we want to control this, how this emission goes, we can uh, either change uh, the energetic level of the emitters, the way it interacts with the environment, or the environment itself. And here I give you some examples of uh, different types of uh, spontaneous emission control where either the environment uh, or uh, the interaction or the emitter was uh, modulated or modified in order to achieve this control. What we have chosen for our model was uh, a case of initially excited to level quantum dot yeah, which has uh, his uh, transition frequency modulated by, for example, by uh, off-resonant laser. And we've put this uh, quantum dot into an optical cavity with a low quality factor. So in order to achieve a bad cavity limit and high damping rates. And then we've also considered put this uh, quantum dot on a nanomechanical resonator uh, in order to build a optomechanical device. So why we do that? Because we know that for the case of uh, when we take a single atom and place it in a, with a, tra with a uh, modulated transition frequency and place it uh, in a bad cavity, with a cavity with a low quality factor, we achieve uh, spontaneous emission co control and uh, it uh, decays uh, more slowly. It happens when, and it happens when you consider um, 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 transition as, um, modulation signal, uh, a pure sinusoidal signal. So one of the first questions we ask here, we try to investigate here, is what happens when, when we consider uh, different modulation signals, not only pure sinusoidal ones. And, uh, Another question is what uh, happens if we introduce uh, uh, optomechanical part to this uh, um, spontaneous emission control scheme. So the analytical model and the quantum dynamics is this given by the Hamiltonian and Smart equation, where the Hamiltonian is built by the free term of uh, the quantum dot, where we have inserted uh, additional term responding, uh, describing the modulation of the quantum dot transition, the free term of the um, mechanical resonator, the optical cavity, the interaction of the quantum dot with the phonons of the mechanical resonator, as well as the interaction of the quantum dot uh, with the optical cav cavity. Sorry. And the master equation is described by the coherent part and also the damping terms, where we've considered the thermal damping of the mechanical resonator, as well as the cavity damping. So in order to solve this equation and the system dynamics, the first step we do, we try to eliminate the photonic operators, so the operators of the optical cavity. In order to do that, first of all, we consider a, a modulation signal uh, being periodical in, so that we can uh, decompose it in Fourier series. Then we change, uh, we choose a specific change of representation so uh, that we are able to define the expression of the photonic operators, so to, to we found it, them. And then we insert this uh, expression of the photonic operators back into the master equation. In such a way, we eliminate them. So once eliminated, the Heisenberg equation for a system operator takes this form. And uh, with the... Uh, uh, 
takes this form. So this is the, the final form. What I'd like to highlight here is that uh, some coefficient, coefficients that appear when we eliminate the photonic operators should be adapted for numerical calculus. And here for the calculus we use, we are limited to a few, only a few Fourier terms in the Fourier composition. So we cannot treat the signals with big differences in frequencies. And uh, once we found the, the general form of the Heisenberg equation, we could uh, found, uh, estimate the various uh, parameters of interest. Particularly here in this study, I'll present uh, the investigation of the population of the quantum dot, where from its uh, equation of motion, we already can see that it's not affected by the presence of phonons into the systems. Because, uh, yeah, because. And one of the first investigation is to validate uh, if the control and the slowdown of the spontaneous emission uh, occurs. Here we consider, uh, we look at the population of the quantum dot for two cases. In red line, we, we see, uh, we consider a quantum dot with a modulated transition frequency by a pure sinus sinusoidal signal. And then we compare it to the case when we have no modulation at all. And we see that uh, here we have a clear uh, enhancement of the lifetime of the excited uh, population of the quantum dot. So it's, it's kept more time in the, in the excited state. And what we try to look further at is to consider what happens if we, instead of taking a pure sinusoidal, uh, sinusoidal signal, like in red here, we will try to consider a similar, uh, uh, si similar modulation signal, but this time with some fluctuations in it. This is particularly interesting because uh, uh, these fluctuations can also originate for imperfection or impurities in the, in the energetic bands of the quantum dot. So what we find here is that when we consider uh, modulations with some fluctuations inside, we have a, a, slow, a, a more increased slowdown of the spontaneous emission effect, so longer lifetime of the excited state population of the quantum dot. Uh, different uh, investigation occurred is um, we consider modulation signals which has a slowly varying amplitude, like in the case when uh, uh, the modulation which occurs by applying an off resonant uh, laser to the quantum dot uh, has uh, this laser has a varied intensity, so we have. Uh, uh, we have a modulation signal with a varying amplitude. What we obtain here uh, is very tricky and it depends uh, actually of uh, which cavity we choose. Because in this particular case presented here, we see that the excited uh, population of the quantum dot uh, has a longer lifetime, but it happens only when the width of the optical cavity is of the same order of magnitude as the frequency of the, um, of the amplitude of the signal. So if we, if we consider other cases when uh, the optical cavity is uh, broader than uh, the, uh, the um, frequency of the amplitude. So when K is bigger than omega, in these cases, we will have the contrary effect. We will see shorter lifetimes of uh, the excited population of the quantum dot uh, than uh, com when comparing to a pure sinusoidal signal. And uh, from the other part of the investigation, which is still in preparation, we look at uh, what happens to the mechanical resonator and uh, how the slowdown of the spontaneous emission, which, appear, uh, which occurs, does influence the me uh, quantum mechanics of the, uh, of the mechanical resonator. So here again, 
we try to compare two different cases. In blue lines here, so first of all, we look at the mean phonon number of the mechanical resonator and try to compare two different cases. In blue line here, we have a quantum dot with a modulated transition. And in red line, we have the case when the quantum dot uh, doesn't have any modulation, transition modulation. So what we see here is that the uh, enhanced uh, lifetime of uh, the uh, quantum dot excited population leads to enhanced lifetime of the generated uh, phonons inside the mechanical resonator. And um, this is explained uh, this is explained by the fact that uh, the phonons from the mechanical resonator couples only to the excited state of the quantum dot, only to the exciton which is created inside. So longer this exciton lives, uh, more phonons we have uh, and uh, more lifetime with a longer lifetime we have inside the resonator. So in conclusions, what we've investigated and found here is that for uh, modulation signals processing fluctuations, we have uh, a clear enhancement of the slowdown effect of the spontaneous emission with the longer lifetime of the excited population. In the cases for signals with the slowly, for modulation signals with slowly varying amplitudes, we can may either have uh, um, longer or shorter lifetimes uh, of uh, the excited population depending on uh, how this uh, slowly varying amplitude scales to the width of the optical cavity. And in what concerns the phonon dynamics, we've uh, found out that uh, the presence of phonons into the system does not affect the dynamics of the spontaneous emission, but the change in the dy dynamics of the spontaneous emission uh, does affect and is transferred to the dynamics of the phonons, which are also slowed down. So I'd like to thank you, everyone. Okay, Victor, thank you for nice presentation. Are there some questions? Okay, if not, I have one question. Okay, you have <laughs> amplitude A and you listed the parameter A divided by omega. Once I observe it equal to 60, this means you have a small modulation. Another one, you increase to 200. 200, it's not too much. I mean, the, in this case, you will have the forced uh, something you, to the system or not. You understand what I mean? Yeah, I understand. So first of all, it's the omega of the modulation, not the omega of the quantum dot transition. And uh, basically what I wanted to find here is that uh, what I wanted to show here, to represent here, it's an exaggerated case of a spontaneous emission uh, decay, which goes, uh, which has a lifetime way bigger than uh, the, uh, the case of a non-modulated uh, quantum dot. So basically the choice of A here affects only how much the quantum dot is kept in its excited state. And uh, it could also work similarly for other A's, for any A. Okay, thank you.